Welcome to the Learn True Health Podcast. I'm your host, Ashley James. This is episode 47. Well, I'm really excited for today's guest, Jeff Sanders. Welcome to the show. You're going to help us increase our productivity, which is something that will affect every area of our life, including our health. So thank you so much for being on the show. Well, thank you, Ashley. I'm excited to be here today. Yeah. So you are like the master of productivity and personal development. Uh, How did you get started in all this? Tell us your story. Well, that's actually kind of interesting because I never planned this uh, at all. It's kind of funny to me. I, uh, I went to college and had uh, majors in theater and psychology. And so my goal was actually not to do either one of those things for a career, though. I, I studied those because I enjoyed them. And so I, when I graduated, I, uh, my wife got into grad school in Boston. And so we moved from Missouri up to Boston. And I immediately took a, a full-time job in door-to-door sales because they were hiring. And uh, I had no interest in that. I had no clue what I wanted to do. But my boss was a big big fan of John Maxwell. And he said, Hey, read this book. And I read it and it was floored right away because the book was all about personal growth and how to you know, kind of take life by the, by the horns and, and go, I and go get whatever you want. And I was just kind of blown away by the message and this real positive, you know, personal development journey that he, John had been on himself and how I could do the exact same thing. And so I became obsessed at that point with reading as many books as I could, watching documentaries and trying all kinds of experiments and doing whatever I, I could do. And along that path, I began to realize that I wanted to be like the people that I was studying. So the authors, the speakers, the podcasters, uh, the filmmakers, like I wanted to do what they were doing. Uh, And after a few years of kind of diving into all of that, I realized, okay, well, I'm just going to build a side business and then we'll hopefully be able to make that a full-time gig at some point. And I went full-time two years ago now. And so I've been doing that since then. And it's been uh, just kind of a whirlwind of activity doing everything from blogging and podcasting to writing books and giving speeches and uh, lots of other things all wrapped around those concepts of productivity and healthy habits and personal development. Wow. Congratulations. It's stepping out to go from, you know, being an employee to being your own boss. That's a huge leap. And I know a lot of people want to do it, but they don't know how, or they don't have that. Uh, they don't know how to transition. And so you transitioned very gracefully. It sounds Now you have a very well, successful. Oh, sorry. Not so I was going to say, I wouldn't say it was as graceful as maybe I, I, I kind of glossed over some of the details there. Yeah. Uh, I was I was laid off from my job because the company I worked for went bankrupt. And so I had the, a choice two years ago whether to conti- to go you know, and get another full-time job to replace it or to stick with the, the part-time business I'd been developing and make it my full-time thing. And so I was kind of put in that position where I had to figure out what that was going to look like. And there's a few months there where the budget was pretty tight, uh, but I was able to, you know, make that a little smoother because I had been building the business on the side for, you know, three or four years at that point. And so, yeah, I mean, it it wasn't as bad as it could have been, uh, but certainly wasn't the smooth uh, journey that I hoped it would be. Right. But now look at you. Um, how, How many lives do you think you have impacted that you've helped through um, your podcast, The 5 a.m. Miracle, and through uh, your book and all your speaking engagements. How many, how many lives do you think you've impacted? It's a really good question. Um, from what I know, if, and then the podcast has had just under 3 million downloads in three years. Congratulations. So Congratulations. Well, thank you. It's not all individual, individual people. It's a lot of people download multiple episodes in one. But um, I would say somewhere along the ballpark of maybe two or 300,000 people. Um, so it's probably a pretty sizable audience, right? Wow. Well, congratulations. I know I'm excited to learn more from you because we all, all want to be productive. Uh, I would like to get into the air, the question around procrastination because I think productivity and then I'm like, man, I've been procrastinating on all these things I want to do, but my life just seems to fill up with the reactive things that I need to take care of in the moment. And at the end of the day, there's nothing left. And I feel like I'm procrastinating on some things I could do. And I know in terms of health goals, a lot of people do procrastinate. Oh, I know I should eat healthier. I'll do that next week or, you know, and and they they put it off or exercise is a big thing. You can procrastinate on exercise, you know, till the cows come home. So how do you get people to to end procrastination? What are your what are your some tools that you give them? 
Well, procrastination is a funny thing because we all do it, but I think that it's the knowing or being aware of your own tendencies is really the key point because I think in my own life, I've had those same uh, challenges, whether it's exercise or nutrition or business goals or personal projects. And what I've come to, to realize, especially in the last probably few months of my life especially, is that I'm not going to be able to do everything. And so I have to make very clear choices about what I will spend my time on and what I'm going to commit to. And so that's what I encourage you, my listeners, my podcast and readers of my book to do is to d- discover what those key things are, to identify those key priorities and do just those few things and do them really well and do them every single day if you can. And when you do that, then you actually create those habits and form those patterns that allow you to get the results you want, all the while knowing there are plenty of things you could be doing that you're choosing not to do. And so it's not necessarily you're procrastinating on things, but you are intentionally choosing what you are doing, what you are not doing. And with that kind of clarity, then you don't have the guilt that comes with procrastinating. You don't have that, you know, that baggage that comes with that. So you're able to be much more present in what you choose to do and then let other things go. Uh, it's a process that takes time. I'm still, I always work through that because I always have so many things I want to spend time on uh, that I just don't have time for. So you have to you know, pick your battles and find the goals that really matter a lot to you. Uh, choose the foods you really want to eat and choose the workouts that you are really passionate about and make sure those you know, stay on your calendar. Uh, it definitely is an ongoing challenge, but it's one of those that once you know what those key things are, I find it to be much easier to make sure that I'm always doing those things. I love it. You know, um, I just spoke with a friend of mine who um, is friends with Elon Musk. And she said that she was so inspired by how he has figured out how to prioritize his family life and running, uh, you know, the SpaceX program and and Tesla. And he has set aside time. Uh, He only works on Tesla two days a week. He works on SpaceX two days a week. And the rest of the time he spends with all of his kids. And I thought, man, that is amazing. uh, The ability to prioritize because I know I get so... um, I get so sucked in to a project that I'm doing. I just, I, I, I want to shut everything else out and only focus on that. And so to have that amount of discipline, I thought was absolutely amazing. Now you have an incredible amount of discipline, I think, because you have run what over 10 marathons. Yeah. I've run about 10 marathons and two or three ultra marathons as well. So yeah. Wow. And, and how did you get started doing that? Um, actually, my running journey began in college. I was I, I just spent, I spent about three months studying abroad in Prague, and so I spent a good chunk of time uh, destroying my body, drinking heavily, doing drugs. I mean, I was I was a mess. And I came back from Prague and knew right away I had to make a, a big change. And so that's when I began to run in order to kind of get myself, you know, back on, on track. And I got obsessed with that. I became really hooked on running. And so then since I graduated college, I decided to make a marathon my next goal. And so in probably my early to mid 20s, I was running a marathon every few months and just keeping that going for a long time. Um, I haven't run as many marathons recently, but I've got, you know, you know, I still run frequently, uh, but for a while there, running marathons was definitely my thing, and it was a big part of you know my kind of personal development journey overall was really getting my health back on track and prioritizing running and marathons especially as being my go-to thing. Now you are also a passionate raw vegan. Am I? Yes. Is that right? When did you become a raw vegan, and why? What what sparked that? Well, that's a much longer story, but I'll give you the, the short version of that one. Um, I was this is I had just gotten married, and about six months later, my wife and I went to get uh, our first puppy. And I uh, we took our new puppy to the pet store to get his food. And the pet store owner asked me, you know, what kind of food do you want to get for your new dog? And I said, well, the best food you have. And then I kind of paused, and I was like, wait a minute. I don't buy myself this kind of high-quality food, but I'm going to do so for my new puppy. So that's kind of a weird problem here in my life. And so then I began to really research, well, what is healthy food? What does that mean to me? How, oh, how can I eat healthy in a way that you know, resonates with me? And it took me about a f- six to 10 months, somewhere in that, in that ballpark where I was just, you know, watching documentaries, I was reading tons of books, I was consuming information as fast as I could on health and nutrition. And along that way, I, I found many people that said that letting go of meat and dairy was a, a big part of their own health journey. And so I decided to give that a try. And this is coming from 25 years up to that point of me eating whatever I wanted. I had no filter. Uh, I was perfectly fine to eat whatever I could, but I had to make a change. And so I, I began to try those experiments. I let go of meat, let go of dairy, and discovered that going vegan really fit for me. 
And uh, later on, I watched more documentaries about animal rights and environmental I- issues and, and, and found a- other reasons to go and stay vegan. Um, and then raw vegan kicked in later on as well with me eating lots of fruits and vegetables. And so my lifestyle today is filled with lots of smoothies and a lot of salads and a lot of healthy food. And it works really well. And I, I can't recommend it enough. Well, you have tons of energy, so you're doing something right. How did you come up with the 5 a.m. miracle? Why 5 a.m.? It's a great question. And actually, this happened because of a marathon that I was training for. This is about five years ago now. I was working a full-time job and training for a marathon and building my side business. And so I was very busy at the time. And I realized the only real time I had to train for the marathon was before I went to work that day because I wouldn't have time during the, the work day. And after work, I generally was building my business. And so the only time to train was at 5 a.m. I had to wake up super early, crack of dawn, and go run. And the first day that I tried that, I fell in love with it. I was just obsessed with this concept that I was, you know, there were hours in the day that I didn't have available to me before because I just slept right through them. And so then I began to realize there's a lot of potential here. So I trained for that marathon, finished the race. But then after the race was over, I continued my 5 a.m. wake up calls and started using that time for other projects. And so I was doing business work. I was doing personal projects. And I discovered that I can get a lot done in a very short time period, uh, especially between like the hours like 5 and 7 a.m. And so that's where the 5 a.m. miracle concept kicked in for me. And so from there, I wrote about it in my blog, and then I made a short ebook about it. And then I discovered that this is a great concept for a podcast. And so that's what I launched a few months later. And the whole thing just kind of went from there. Oh, fantastic. So um, for us who have kids or, you know, have so many obligations, oh, you know, how do we how do we start to implement the 5 a.m. miracle? How do like from someone who, you know, waits till the, the last minute to wake up because we're trying to squeeze every moment of sleep uh, we can, uh, probably because we don't have uh, good habits to get us to go to bed on time. What what can we do to begin to make these small shifts so that we can start uh, getting productive early in the morning? Well, it's a good point there to make small shifts because that's exactly what this is all about. Uh, There's a lot of people who lead very busy lives and they think that, you know, waking up early is not possible for them or they think that they're night owls and they can't wake up early. Uh, But the reality is, is that, you know, I am that same guy. I've been a night owl my whole life. I'm very busy as well. And yet there's always a way to make small changes and make it more effective for you. And so one thing I describe in my book is this way that you could either say, well, tomorrow morning I'll get out of bed at 5 a.m. regardless of when I usually get up, uh, which is a much, much more hardcore choice and usually backfires pretty quickly. Uh, so the better, you know, the better choice for most people is to wake up just a little bit earlier tomorrow, like 15 extra minutes, and to be intentional with that time. Say, I'll try to go to bed a little bit earlier, wake up just a little bit earlier, and then when I do get up, do something with that time. Uh, so don't just wake up 15 minutes earlier and do the same thing you did yesterday. Day. Like wake up and do some yoga, wake up and read a book, wake up and do something you haven't made time for. And when you do that, then you begin to reinforce that there's a positive benefit you get from waking up a little bit earlier. And if you repeat that process over the course of a few weeks, you can make a transition to the ideal wake up time for you and then be intentional with the time you have available in the morning, which then correlates to being more intentional the rest of your day, especially with going to bed on time, which is where the whole thing really has to take place in order from 5 a.m. to happen. So it is about intentionality. It's about small changes and making sure that you choose uh, what you're going to do very intentionally with the time that you have, especially early in the morning. Excellent. So um, what are your keys for us becoming more productive? So we're going to wake up a bit earlier. We're going to choose the things that we that are important to us. Um, what other keys can we uh, take from you to begin to become more productive? I think one of the most important aspects of productivity is energy. And so one of the things that I make sure is my priority every morning when I, when I, when I get out of bed is that I have energy as the primary goal. So that means everything from an early morning run to a smoothie to hydration to maybe a little bit of coffee. Uh, I'm consuming things that are going to make sure that I have as much energy as possible. So when the workday begins, I'm ready to go. And then I continue those kinds of same habits throughout the day. I think that productivity, is it's so clear that you, you're not productive when you're tired. And when the afternoon rolls around and you want to nap or, you know, the evening hours are there and your head is cloudy, like you want to prioritize, you know, and not only having the energy there, but then also doing your most important work when your energy is at its best. And if you're doing those few things, you're going to get a lot done in a very short time period, which will mean the whole day will be that much more productive for you. Uh, so you can take breaks and not feel 
feel guilty about it. I think it's a really important thing because you want to have that balance of time that you're on and doing lots of great work and then time you can relax and, and chill, then be prepared for the next time you, you're going to do your work. And so if anything, pro productivity is all about energy. And so the more that you spend time taking care of your health and taking care of your energy, uh, the more productive you can possibly be. I love it. I love it. So tell us a bit more about your podcast. You have so many downloads. You've been doing it for three years. Um, what can what can our listeners learn from from checking out your podcast? Yeah, the podcast is my weekly show that I've been uh, yeah, releasing now for just about three years. And uh, it's uh, basically the same thing we've been talking about today. It's, it's a high energy podcast. I bring on guests uh, generally once every two or three weeks. And then we talk about these various concepts, um, everything from early morning routines to productivity strategies to success and personal development, uh, healthy habits. Um, I also get on the microphone myself and talk about things that I'm doing every week that help me to stay productive and healthy and energized. And uh, yeah, it's basically it's about 30 30 to 40 minutes of trying to figure out, you know, how can we have better tools and strategies and resources uh, to be our best selves. And that's really the goal of the podcast. Uh, the tagline of the show is to dominate your day before breakfast. Uh, so the idea there being you wake up early to do a whole lot, uh, but you do not have to wake up at 5 a.m. to listen to the show or be an early riser to get the benefits from there. Uh, we talk about all kinds of strategies that anybody can implement across the board, uh, regardless of your career or your current season of life. So really, it's just all, it's all about energy. It's all about health. It's all about personal growth. And all those things just kind of wrap up into a show every week. You know, it's so funny. Um, I was uh, at a mastermind with Frank Kern, and he was asked, how do, how do you write everything you write? He, he's, he writes books. He, you know, he, he publishes so much content. And he says his, the key is he wakes up before the sun rises. Uh, and he has like five kids. So I'm like, I, I just didn't even know how, how he was able to do that. But he says the most productive he is, is before the sun rises. And you are confirming this. I think this is amazing concept to, um, to get so much done before the day even begins. Cause it's, that's when it's quiet. The phone isn't ringing. You know, there's, there's no other demands on you. It, it's, it's, um, time for yourself. So I think that's really, really cool. Um, well, tell us a bit about your website, jeffsanders.com. What can people get uh, by going to your website? Yeah, the website really is kind of the home base for everything that I do. So there you can find links to the podcast. You can find the book. You can find uh, the blog post that I've written. Um, last few years, I've written probably three or 400 posts. So there's a lot of content there to sift through. Um, of course, the, the email list is there, which is my, I call it the 5 a.m. club. Uh, it's a great thing if you want to join up there. There's uh, some free gifts there to get you started with your own 5 a.m. journey. Uh, so there's a lot of cool things going on there. But that, that yeah, jeffsanders.com is really the home base for all the things I'm working on. So yeah, check it out. Awesome. All right. Well, this obviously is a health podcast, but it's holistic health. So we're looking to shift all areas of life because um, health is holistic. But in terms of health specifically, what tips do you have for our listeners to improve their health? I think the first thing that I tend to recommend in, in this area always is hydration. That's kind of the primary go-to thing. I, mean, I think that sleep is probably the most important thing you could possibly focus on. But for most people, when they wake up, it's always that question of, well, what do I do now? And for me, it is always hydration first. So I drink a full liter of water as the first thing I do in the morning. And it has changed my life in so many ways. I think that being hydrated is a phenomenal thing. That It wakes up your body from the inside out uh, without caffeine required. Uh, you feel so much better. You have so much more energy. Uh, it's, it's an amazing thing, just drinking water, how it could change your life. But it really is a very powerful thing. I absolutely agree with you. In fact, one of the first episodes uh, we had was with Dr. Molly Niedermeyer. And she said that when we're dehydrated, um, it we can reduce, be reduced by 25% of our energy um, by not drinking enough water. So just by missing a few uh, cups of water, our energy goes down 25%. And I thought that was amazing. Um, just one, one liter of water in the morning can bring your energy up to 100%. That's incredible. Yeah. So you are, you're so busy, you're helping so many people. What do you have next? What, what is, where are you going to take the 5am miracle? What, what projects do you have on the horizon? 
Uh, the next big thing I'm working on is going to be a membership site. So kind of like the uh, the professional level of, of achievement, I think, is what I'll be kind of creating. It's going to be like a monthly membership where people can have most likely if I'm playing now will be access to live webinars and, and more advanced training and video courses. And so that's going to be kind of the the higher level program I'll be developing uh, the rest of this summer. And so, uh, yeah, it should be a lot of fun. Congratulations. That's awesome. Now. You've mentioned that you've watched documentaries and that they really helped shape your thinking and um, and inspired you to take this path. Can you list off some of your favorite documentaries that uh, that really impacted your life? Uh, see, the ones on t- off the top of my brain have to do with health. Uh, the ones there would be Food Matters, Food Inc., Earthlings, uh, Forks Over Knives. Those are a bunch of health documentaries I've grown to love over the years. Um, Personal growth wise, I'm trying to think here. The Secret was an interesting one. I'm not, I'm not totally on board with everything in that documentary, but it was really fascinating. Um, hmm, personal growth wise, I'd probably have to look this up to find out the other ones I've done before. Uh, but yeah, the health ones are the ones that I'm, most stand out to me because I know those are the ones that I consumed like crazy for probably like two or three years. And I, I find those to be really inspirational. Mm-hmm. My doc, the documentary uh, that changed my life was um, What the Bleep Do We Know? Did hmm. you ever see that one? No. Oh my gosh, you have to see it. Um, I think I think it's still on Netflix. If not, it's on Amazon. Um, but that completely shifted my consciousness. Uh, so absolutely. And then um, Food Inc. My husband and I saw in the theaters. It, it was oh, wow. very impactful. Yeah. It, um, it's absolutely amazing um, what's going on with our food. It's so many people are not eating food. They're eating hmm. food like substances. Exactly. <laughs> yep. So, um, share a bit about what your diet looks like. Like some, you know, what does your breakfast look like? What does your lunch look like? Give us, give us some, you know, ingredients. So, if someone wanted to eat just like you for a day, what would it be like? Well, in the morning, I tend to have my full liter of water for breakfast, um, and then I'll have well, that's for breakfast. That's the kind of the, the pre-breakfast. The actual breakfast itself is generally a full Vitamix smoothie. So that's a, a very large blender full of lots and lots of fruit. Um, so I tend to have uh, about half of that is bananas. Another half might be uh, some blueberries or raspberries, uh, frozen fruit usually. I've been on the season of the year will also determine what's in there. So right now it's more peaches and nectarines and strawberries and just whatever fruit I've got available. So breakfast is generally lots of fruit all blended together. And I, I tend to drink about half of that and then I go for a workout and then have the other half afterwards. So that's generally breakfast is a big smoothie. Lunch tends to be a salad. Um, and dinner is usually a, either a much larger salad or something along those lines. I try to make sure I'm getting as much greens in my body every day as I can. And my salads are just very large compilations of lots of, of vegetables, everything from, you know, kale and Swiss chard to, uh, you know, green peppers and tomatoes and celery. Uh, so whatever I can find, I like to have tons of variety. So I'll go to like a produce section of a, a grocery store and just buy whatever I possibly can that's in season and on sale and eat it in huge quantities. So I, the best example of what I eat every day is whatever's you know on sale in the produce section, uh, just go buy a lot of that and eat it like crazy, and that tends to be my entire day. Do you focus on organic? I do whenever I can afford it. Um, it's definitely an expensive uh, thing to do. Um, I definitely get organic whenever I can. Um, I, I'm a big fan of that, but it definitely costs more. And what are your uh, sources of protein or healthy fats? Um, and this is actually interesting because I've seen, I read a lot of books about this too, about, uh, there's a, a really strong focus on protein in the media and I don't buy into it. Um, a, a lot of what I have read is, is really just confirms the fact that you get all the protein you need from fruits and vegetables. So you don't actually have to go, I mean, I do can still consume tofu. I eat beans. I have, um, other, you know, almonds and, and, and nothing seeds, ways to get fruits and, you know, fat and protein. Uh, but you don't actually need very large quantities of these things. And so if you eat just a lot of fresh produce, you get all that you need. And uh, from that, you can be really healthy. And so I have, you know, I've taken blood tests in the last few years, and I've, I've definitely gone the gamut to figure out how healthy I can be. And I have not had any issues with those at all. Uh, so it really is just a matter of eating lots of healthy food. Wow. Well, you've got the energy to back it up. So you've got the health and energy to, to back up uh, how, how you're, you're eating you wake up in the morning, you're running, you're eating lots of greens and fruits. I think that's fantastic. I'd love for you to uh, end this episode 
with a challenge that you could give our listeners, something that they can do now and for the next seven days to improve their health? Ooh, good one. I would say if you wanted to improve your health, uh, pick a, an activity that you love to do and make it a, a short activity and commit to doing that. And the reason why I say is one you love is because I've had a lot of people ask me questions about you know, healthy habits and fitness and I tend to find that people choose activities they're told to do, not things they would choose to do. So instead of saying, well, I'm going to go lift weights at the gym because, you know, someone said I should have more muscle. Like if you don't like to lift weights at the gym, then don't do that. So, like pick something you really love doing uh, because you're more likely to stick with that in the long haul. Uh, that's why I run marathons because I love running. Uh, I don't, you know, play tennis, for example. You know, so I, I'm choosing something that's really, you know, that resonates with me, that I feel good about, that I can do uh, fairly quickly and easily. You know, I just put on some shoes and run outside really fast. You know, make it easy and make it something that you love to do. And if that's what you focus on, then you're definitely going to be able to do that every day going forward. Excellent. Thank you so much, Jeff, for being on the show. You can check out uh, Jeff's website, jeffsanders.com, and all the links to everything Jeff does, his podcast, his book, his website, they're going to be in the show notes of today's podcast. Jeff, I'm really excited for your upcoming membership. I'd love to have you back on the show to share more uh, details as, as you launch your membership site, and I'm looking forward to seeing where you take uh, your podcast and, and where you take everything you're doing. I think you're making a very positive impact in people's lives. I know that if I could wake up at 5 in the a.m. and be super productive uh, before breakfast, that would completely shift my life. Uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to beginning to implement everything I've learned from you. Yeah, that'd be great. I'd love to be back on the show again sometime. And yeah, I'm excited to hear, uh, I guess, your, your own journey if you want to begin to wake up earlier. That'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. And I, I, I've always been that night owl person trying to sleep in as much as possible. Plus, we got a toddler, so there's like... We don't know if, when we're going to get sleep, when we're not going to get sleep. Uh, but I have definitely felt the pain of not being as productive as I wish I could be. And I know that uh, with everything that you're doing and you're teaching, that uh, I'm going to be able to begin to become more productive, which is going to spill over into every area of my life. So I'm going to check out your book and uh, your website. And I, I definitely recommend that um, my listeners do the same. Let's all become more productive early in the morning. Thank you so much, Jeff, for being on the show. Yeah, thank you. Are you looking to optimize your health? Are you looking to get the best supplements at the lowest price? For high quality supplements and to talk to someone about what supplements are best for you, go to takeyoursupplements.com and one of our fantastic true health coaches will help you pick out the right supplements for you that are the highest quality and the best price. That's TakeYourSupplements.com TakeYourSupplements.com That's TakeYourSupplements.com Be sure to ask about free shipping and our awesome referral program.